Hello. Hi, everyone. How are you? We got some music in the background today. I don't know if you can hear it. Um, I'm at a resort, actually. I'm in Panama doing this video job for a vegan activist. And this guy that actually kind of arranged all of this sold me through words on, like, a really great experience with a famous activist and, like, there was a lot of money to be made in this kind of project, but it's yet to be determined. So I'm having a pretty good time. I mean, it's like paradise here. We're hanging out, seeing, I wish you could see this view. We've been going in the ocean, surfing. Uh, I went to an animal sanctuary yesterday and met an amazing lady, Dorothy, who has 70 animals, and she just runs it all herself. She actually reminds me a lot of my mom. She's really selfless, she's smart, she's like a, an organizer, and she takes in animals that have been abandoned or abused or um, just like that get dropped off at her space, and she just feeds them and helps them and rehabilitates them and brings them back into wildlife. So that was really, really cool. I spent a long time interviewing her, and I think I'm going to do like a mini documentary about her her sanctuary and how awesome she is. So please be looking for that on my station. I was really inspired by her, actually, and I learned I learned a lot of like life lessons just in one day there. And I, I just wanted to be around her. I felt like she was like my kind of people. And she does it all with her two sons, who are teenagers. I'm hanging with like six people. Uh, two of them I just met in Panama. One of them I knew from the internet before, and. He, he kind of like gave me, the, invited me to come and do this video project, and I had never met him before, so I was like, are we going to get along okay, or how's it going to be? And I think it's okay. It's a little rocky at times. Um, our personalities are clashing a little bit, but I think I'm just very intense, and I realize that I get, I get kind of like moody and broody and annoyed with people sometimes, and like I just got to realize like everybody's different and you might communicate like how you do but it, it's not that that's bad I just have to be more patient I think with some people so I'm learning I'm learning my patience with this person and then we're hanging with a vegan activist and his wife which is, is you know pretty cool too um, I don't know like we're all that we're all like connecting on a heart level but as far as the animals go, I like to work on projects that are, that are going to help animals. So I'm here trying to work on a vegan project to help the animals in Panama, and I'll be posting more about that as well. So I wanted to film while I was here and say, hey, do a YB Lamron, which is my podcast that I started like over a year ago. Actually, it was right after I turned 40. I started this because I really wanted to talk about what dating was like over 40 and the things I was going through. And back then, it was, I was living in Buffalo, New York, and I was involved in this friend group. And I had this guy that I liked, and then he ended up getting a girlfriend that was my friend. And I was like going through all these emotions, trying to understand myself and what I, what I was looking for as a woman over 40 that doesn't, I don't want to be married again, I don't think. I definitely don't want kids. If you've seen some of my past videos, you know that I'm kind of, like, I don't want to say, like, against having kids, but my thoughts on, on reproducing are pretty strong, and I wish they weren't like that. I wish I could just be chill and be like, oh, we're a human. We're like a human in a human body, and, like, we're here in this abundant universe with all these different species, and what do all the species do? They all have babies and multiply. Today, I was just walking on the beach right up front, and I saw these tiny little seagulls, and they had all these baby seagulls. And I was looking at them, and I was like, why can't I just be like a seagull and just like hang out with my species and do like what the species does? You know, I think like there's regular people out there that if you're looking at like human beings as an animal, they just kind of like get married or they get into a couple and then they have kids and live in a house and like... I don't know, if, if you're watching this, you might know what I mean, like, why, it's YB Lamron, so it's like normal people, and there's nothing wrong with being normal, it's like what the human species does, just like those little seagulls hopping around in the water over there, like, they're just in their element, 
and I feel a lot of times like I just can't be that person. I, I always have gone against the grain and it's annoying sometimes. I annoy myself because like it's not always emotionally easy to be that kind of person. So I was just trying to, ex to explain to one of the people that I've met on this trip my like dating life and my dating philosophy. And I said to her, I don't really know because it's always changing. Like, I re remember when I did my first Why Be Lamar on podcast, right when I turned 40, like I was just telling you, I really liked this guy that we were hanging out. I was hanging out with him for a while. And then he started seeing one of my friends. And it was like, it was devastating at the time. And I would talk about what I went through during that time. But now, like, fast forward a year and a half from that and I probably wouldn't have ever even dated that guy. I kind of look back and I'm like, oh, he was super cool. I see him for who he is. I see him for like the fun party, nice guy that he was and how he would bring a group together and just like really bring a lightness to the, to the situation. He brought a lot of joy and I liked that. I was attracted to that. But I see we weren't really emotionally connecting on, on like a deep level that I know that I need. So the Maggie from a year ago, a year and a half ago, is totally different than the Maggie now. I'm going to be 43 in September, right? What month is it? Is it January? It's January. Yeah, I'll be 43 in November. And I talk a lot on this podcast about what it's like to, to not like not have a trajectory, not to just kind of like float. It's kind of like float, which is why I ended up in Panama on this job. And a lot of people think it's really cool. They, they look at my life and say, well, you know, I love your life or I envy that. But I, I mean, I don't have a lot of money. I just get, well, get like hired here and there. And then I will switch it up. Like sometimes I'm doing a videography project. Like, for example, right now in Puerto Rico, I'm working on a documentary about a, a Puerto Rican poet. And she's incredible. So uh, I, that's keeping me busy. I'm also working on my app, which if you look at some of my earlier podcasts, I talk about my app that is going to take waste from restaurants and grocery stores, package it up, and get it out to people at a discounted rate. And I think it's almost done, but now I have to beta test it in a place. So that's going to be coming. I was just kind of explaining what I, what I do with my life. So I, I have video work, mini documentaries. I have this app that I'm working on, and I'm attempting to write a book about my time in Puerto Rico and how I left LA in February. I remember, I remember saying goodbye to my roommate and I didn't want her to see that I had a big bag because I bought a one-way ticket to Puerto Rico and I knew that, that coronavirus was gonna hit and it was gonna be rough and we were gonna be, be in our houses with people. And because I had friends in Italy, they were like, I just talked to them and they were like, Maggie, this is what's happening. So I had these two roommates and they had just gotten significant others. I was living in Hollywood and they had these significant others and I'm living in a loft. So if you watched one of my earlier podcasts, you see me filming in the loft. It's got like a picture of a bonobo, which is an ape right behind it. So I had these two roommates and they, let's see, they got significant others and they just started cooking bacon in the house and like other things and like always being with their others and I'm alone upstairs in this like open air loft and I can hear everything, I can smell everything and I was like I cannot be in this house during a quarantine with these people. It's like a three bedroom apartment but now there's five people in it. So I was like, hell no, I'm gonna go to Puerto Rico, stay in a hostel. I have a friend that owns a hostel. He let me stay for free, which is super cool and I just like cleaned a little bit. Nobody else was staying there because everything had shut down. So I was in that hostel for maybe like two months and then he had a property, the same guy that owns it, like almost next door on the roof tiny little studio apartment. So I moved over there. That's where I've been ever since. And I had a few relationships out there. Okay, so the one video, I don't know if you remember about, I, it was named like the douchebag, the biggest douchebag I ever dated. Okay, so that was one of my most popular videos so far. And I, okay, so I dated him and he was just like, 
great, but also the worst. You know, it was fun for the time in quarantine. Like every night, we go out to this fort, El Moro, and it's like this this fort that they that they glow pink at night. And then there's stray cats just wandering up, and it's COVID, so we're on lockdown at like eight o'clock, and there's police everywhere. And so me and this guy would like sneak out, and we'd like we'd like look for cops each way. And it's all these like blue brick roads and, and these colorful houses everywhere. 500 year old fort and me and this guy are like sneaking around and then we go up there and it's so far away from where the cops were and it's right on the ocean and so we'd play 80s music, we'd jam out watching the clouds and the stars and we had the greatest time actually for three months in quarantine and then I told the story how then we how like there was he, he also had these like qualities that were so annoying, and I would just, I felt myself like being mean to him. I called him a Pomeranian, actually. He just like was so sweet, but, sweet but um, annoying. I don't know, like, you ever watch like Pinky and the Brain? You know that old cartoon, and you're just like, somebody just like, can't, I don't know, I just felt like I couldn't go deep with them. I couldn't talk about the stuff I wanted to talk about. He'd just be like, peace and love, Maggie. And so I had this like huge blow up outside this pizza place with him once because he didn't offer to buy my pizza and I had been like funding the entire couple months because I think he was going through some financial stuff but he never told me like if you're a guy out there and you, you are going through a financial thing and you're dating a girl just like let her know you're going through some stuff and it's better than just like I don't know never offering to bring the wine or to to, to have dinner you know and not that we could go out but so I kind of felt like a little used but I didn't really say it. I let this all build up inside of me. And then finally, when the, the lockdown lifted a little bit, we go out to this restaurant and, you know, he orders in Spanish. He was with his friend and didn't even ask if I wanted something. And didn't even say, hey, Maggie, you know, I don't have the money for this, but can you, can you get this one? You know, it was just like not even an offer. And I was just like... After months of me bringing dinner every night and bringing drinks, I don't even get like a like an offer. So I I just turned around and I just ended the relationship right there. So we had parted. We were done. Okay, that was my my first boyfriend boyfriend in quarantine. And then I got a bartending job for a little bit and I got fired from that job. I did a video about it, which I also got some shit for. Because, you know, I said some mean things about the owner in a video. And, you know, it was rude. I, I, it was rude because I called the owner back. And, and I think someone saw it and it got back to him. And it was really, it was really rude. So I just want to say I'm really sorry if, like, whoever saw that and, and talked to him about it. Because I heard through the grapevine it got back to him. And I feel like an asshole and that was super rude of me. And... I got fired from that bartending job because, it's, well, I don't know if I want to tell the story again, but I didn't want to come in three hours early and they wanted me to, and I kind of gave some pushback, and then they just took my shifts away without talking to me about it. So I felt kind of slighted, and then, and I actually called, see, I was a bitch. I was stupid. I called the guy a liar through WhatsApp because he said we could talk about it, and then he gave my shifts away. So I made this video called Humans Are Weird As Fuck because I was thinking about how weird it is to be in a human body and like have to deal with all this weird stuff every day. Just like, you know, the emotional stuff of life. Feeding yourself, staying alive, like all the needs. So I was like making this video about being weird. It's weird. And I mentioned my old boss. <sighs> anyway, so I'm sorry about that. Okay, so I'm telling you this story to say, to have you understand the three parts of my life with men in Puerto Rico because that's kind of what's, what I talk about, you know, like what's going on. So I had that boyfriend, the one that I hung out with at the fort through quarantine. Then I got a bartending job. And during the bartending job that I just got fired from that I was going to tell you about, the, I met a young guy who was really sweet. He came in. He was 15 years younger than me. And we went cheerleading in La Perla for the first time, well, not for the first time, but like for our first date. But it wasn't even a date. I can't even call it a date. He had two friends with him, and I was with another girl that was like helping bartend that night. So we go down to La Perla, which is like the coolest little beachfront 
it's like a little community that's off the map. The police don't go down there. You can get like any drugs you want. Um, it's just like the coolest place. They they filmed um, what's that? Desposito, na 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 na. You know that that song? They filmed Desposito there. So I love La Perla. If you listen to my other videos, I talk about how much I love La Perla. I want to live there someday, but I don't know if I'd be accepted because it's like. Uh, a, a tight-knit community. They're mainly Puerto Rican. I'd be like that gringa. I don't know. So, okay, so I have the second guy that I dated for four months, and he was really cool. I could talk to him. I remember he's really smart, and he, we just lay in his bed for, I remember one time, seven hours straight, and we just talked and talked. And I, I don't even remember what we talked about, but what I loved about him is like his intelligence. And we could just like take a topic, and we'd call it mental gymnastics. I don't know if, if you're like, like this. Some people have a way with like, um, communicating with their, their significant others where you're like, wow, we just, like, we just took a topic, we analyzed it, we came up with new ideas surrounding it. Maybe it's like a way of being uh, that people are or like something we're learning about ourselves or a memory we had of childhood, and, or, or like an experience we had that formed us. We are talking like on this really, on this level that I don't find with a lot of people. But other things came into the picture with him because he, I mean, I feel like because he was so much younger than me, there was some things he needed to develop in his own self to, like on a maturity level. I, I don't know, I, I, I don't have a bad thing to say about him, but it just, it got kind of toxic pretty quick. We, we sort of started, like, I was kind of, I can be sort of, sort of um, jabby and a little bitchy when somebody is not um, seeing something. It, not necessarily my way, but I want them to know what I'm saying. I want them to understand, like, the framework of it so we can go to a place in conversation. And, and we just, like, sometimes didn't connect. He was like on this level and I was on this level, or, or vice versa. It's not like a hierarchy, but like we weren't getting each other, and then it caused fights. And then I'd be bitchy, and then when I got bitchy, he would fight back. So it was like this circle. We called it, we actually sat down one day with a piece of paper, and we were like, what is going on? Why are we like antagonizing each other like this? And we said, he said, it's like Little Hulk, like all Little Hulk at him, and Hulk, and then he Big Hulks. And then I turned into super bitch. And then it just like escalated. It escalated like he was kicking me out of his apartment. You know, even one time like, oh, it just got, got crazy. And like, I, it just, it got to a point where we had to separate. And it's good that we did because, you know, he was, he wanted to go to law school. He wanted to continue his, his, um, his education. He was running a business. And I was like kind of on a different mode too. I'm, I'm like hanging in Puerto Rico. I don't even know what I was doing back then. I was probably working on my app. And I was also like in vacation mode a little bit. And so when we would get together, we'd have fun. We would eat, drink, play video games. You know, it was, it was like freaking coronavirus. Everybody's like, what the heck is going on? You know? And I think that after a while, we just realized this isn't sustainable. So, so that ended. This is what I was getting at. Okay, so the video I did about the first relationship, I had to take down off of the internet because I sort of reunited with that guy and learned something. I called him, I called him a douchebag in my, in the title of my video, and I feel like that was sort of rude. You know, I'm learning, I'm changing all the time, and this is what. Like part of my, my recording of my life is, is like I say, oh, well, maybe that wasn't the coolest thing to do. Like apologizing to my boss for calling him fat, you know? It's rude. Um, like, it's, it's really rude. And I, I didn't mean that even, like, in a snarky way. I really meant it. And then, um, you know, I called this guy a douchebag, and then I reunited with him, and I realized, like, I was just trying to change him. Like, he was doing stuff that was pissing me off, and I called him a Pomeranian, and, like, he was, like, kind of, you know... I don't think he, he has necessarily, I don't think he has like the intelligence to talk to me like the other guy did. He definitely, we cannot get deep. But we can have fun with boundaries in place. And the boundaries in place that allow us to have fun are going out of his apartment, 
we don't do well if we're just like one on one, right? We do well if we're outside in nature, if we have music on, if we're having fun. But once I try to take the relationship to a place where I want it, which is maybe like an intelligent conversation about something deep, like I could do with the, the second guy. That's when, like, when he wouldn't get what I'm saying or couldn't talk on that level, I get a little bitchy. And I realize, like, I do this with people. I will expect them to be a certain way, and when they don't, I do this, like, this, um, what do you call it, like, um, passive aggressive, or sometimes it's just straight up aggressive thing because I have this expectation and I realize I'm trying to change people and that is, that's awful. I should not be trying to change anyone. The only thing I can do is distance myself so I can step away from them. I can put boundaries on when I can see them, for how long, what we do together, even what we talk about. But for me to go in wanting it all, wanting it the way Maggie would do it, and then getting mad and annoyed and bitchy and nitpicky and passive aggressive when they don't is a really shitty thing to do. Even with, with friendships, I realize I, I put these expectations on people and then when they don't live up to them, I get mad and I cut them out of my life. If you watch some of my really early videos, I was talking about one of my best friends. We had a fight. like two years ago, a year ago, and I actually, I mean, I'm going to kind of cry when I think about it, but I actually love her. And I was living with her, and I was also working for her. I was doing some, like, public relations for her, and we just had a fight, and I had this thing in my childhood somewhere, maybe it comes from being adopted, that's what my therapist tells me, that I just, like, I will, I act out, I, I run away, and I cut people out of my life rather than, and then facing facing it, talking about it, getting through it with them. And so many times, like, I don't know why this was such a huge realization that I try to change people when they don't live up to my expectations. I feel like that's something you should know in kindergarten, right? But it was through this reuniting with the guy that I made the video about that I realized I'm actually doing something bad, and that's not the kind of person I want to be. I don't want to change anybody, so I've committed to, to distancing myself and putting boundaries on the things we do together, where we do it, when we do it, the frequency we do it, and even like what we talk about. And, I, and all I can do is, it's like this, I can move forward with like time and um, giving them more of myself, or I can pull away. And I've started to do that with pretty much everybody in my life. If a, if a friend does something that I'm like, hmm, I don't know if you're, that what you did was not, like, not showing me that you're the greatest friend or that you're emotionally supportive in the way that I want. And the old past Maggie would be like annoyed about it. And then maybe even it would build up and cause a fight and then I run away. But now I look at them, I say, okay, I can't rely on you for the emotional support I need but I can rely on you to go get beers and have a good time. And that, and, that's, and actually, I love you. I love you for that. And for this friend, I, I can, you know, I can talk about guys with. And this friend, I can talk about this with. I, again, simple things. I feel like I like, missed, missed out on a lot of learning, and I'm just now getting it. But that's what this is all about. It's about articulating things that I learn. And I share it on YouTube because I like to go back and watch my progress. And I don't know, maybe somebody is going through the same thing and, and you're learning something too. And I, I think I like watching videos of people that like emotionally dissect their growth and and what they're going through. So I think I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make it it that it. That's gonna be the YD Lamron podcast for today. Again, I'm in Panama. I'm gonna post some I'm gonna post this video soon about my trip to Panama, what I'm doing like in vegan world out here. Okay, it's a whole other story. It's gonna be very interesting how this all unfolds. So I, I'm due to be back in Puerto Rico in probably like a week or so. Maybe two weeks. I don't know. They invited me out here for the whole month and I'm just like I'm like I'm feeling like I wanna get back to Puerto Rico because you know, I miss that fort. I miss those cats. I like, even miss that guy that I, I feel that, that I'm like friends with now. It, we, we don't like have the relationship that we had before, but we have a friendship. And that's pretty cool. We have a friendship now that I put boundaries on it. And, and I'm not judging him and 
being being snippy and 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 mean when he does something that like pisses me off. So, all right. Thank you for watching. Again, I hope you're doing good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'll be, oh, and the other video I'm going to be posting is the one on Dorothy and the Animal Sanctuary. I can't wait for you to see that. And then this documentary I'm doing in Puerto Rico, which is about a Puerto, Re Puerto Rican poet, Lady Lee Andrews, who is the smartest, articulate, beautiful, light being, kind soul. And I love her poetry. And it's all about her life and her business and her struggles. And you're going to love it. So I'm going to be finishing that up within a month. And maybe, just maybe, I'll get my book done. Lots to do. <laughs> okay. Uh, I hope we make some money in the process. So uh, fingers crossed. It's all going to be okay, though. Okay. All right. Love you all. Thanks. I haven't been, on one last thing, I have not been reading the comments. So I'm not, like, pressing that little heart button. I'm not liking them. I'm not responding. Just because, like, if I get a mean one or, like, I don't know. I get, I get really, I'm, like, fragile. So I, I read it and I'm like, oh, I suck. And I start to like get in my head like, I shouldn't be sharing. Oh, really? Maybe I am like, I talk too fast. My brain is on all these different like tangents. Um, you know, I weave things together. And also I like tell myself, I'm already by default telling myself like, you're, you're stupid to be sharing these videos. So I just needed a break from comments. So if you're one of like my fans that is like nice to me and always like saying something nice and I'm not like responding right now, that's just why. So give me like a few months to to get strong and then I'll I'll be liking those, I'll be responding again. So okay, come on. Sending love, talk to you later. Bye.